The top stars of the sport of beach volleyball came to Great Yarmouth for the third stage of the Volleyball England Beach Tour for 2013. We've already had some great events in Skegness and Western Supermare. And now the top stars came to the third event here at Great Yarmouth. The beach tour consists of five venues for 2013, starting at Skegness, then Western Supermare, on to Great Yarmouth, Weymouth and the Grand Finals at Margate. This program will bring you the semi-finals and final of the men's and women's competition. So we start with the women's first semi-final. Petra Joikova and Joe Healy having taken the first set 21-18 over Synagova and Gless. We're now joining halfway through the second set. So with me is Louis Lett and uh, welcome Louis. And uh, this has been a top class uh, match so far, hasn't it here? Good afternoon, yeah, it's been a great match here. Very, very tight. And that's a great knuckle shot over the top. Yeah, it's quite a blustery day out there. So both teams being very, very cautious in the wind. Yeah, and in fact, that first point you saw here, but there you, look at how the wind just grabbed that. And it was, <laughs> I, don't, I think David Beckham would have been pretty pleased with a swerve on that particular shot. Yeah, I think so on a day like today, it's really, really important that you make the most of these wind conditions when you are at the so-called good end where the purple team are at the moment. Yeah. You can see the flags at the far side and, uh, you know, we've had quite a bit of wind actually all the way through the tour. So this is not unusual. The wind here is probably the worst it's been throughout the year and it really is making a very big difference. And also the sun is uh, coming in and out behind the clouds. And, you know, is the sun also, is that also difficult for the players that suddenly, you know, your eyes are getting glare from the uh, sun coming from behind the clouds? Yeah, the, the sun will obviously play quite a big part in the game. The ball obviously goes quite high at times within beach volleyball. So you obviously have to raise your eyes uh, and raise your head. And sometimes that does cause you to look into the sun. Um, but at the moment, it will be the wind that's the biggest sort of difficulty for the players out there today. Yeah. As you can see, the net ban there on the replay, <laughs> it's, it's doing so much. Yeah, it's incredible, isn't it? The net is blowing as well. Not, not only the flags here. And uh, it is mean that the team on the left does have an advantage. You, they, you know, they are kicking into, into the wind, but it is meaning that it, they can play much more aggressive shots and the ball will swerve a lot more. You'll find, especially when the players come to hit the ball, just like now the ball will be doing so much and it'll be hard to keep control of the ball within the set and the spike. Oh, this is a monster block here though, isn't it? Up the net. Again, the, yeah, just because the ball's been set quite tight to the net within the wind, because the team in green are expecting the ball to blow back off the net, but this time it was too tight and obviously blocked. And that serve going long, so that one catching the wind. And that's the difficulty, of course, with the, the wind behind. Yeah, I think most sides, especially Adrian within this context of the game with the wind, will be trying to get as close as they can on the bad end, not to lose by too many and then win by as many as they possibly can at the good end. Yeah. So they've got a five-point lead now, the, the team in purple, and they're looking pretty strong here, I think. Yeah, six points ahead, 19-13 here. As the sun that comes out again, and there's a long-distance shot, but it's too long. And now they're looking very good indeed. Here we see there's a good attempt there, just too long. Yeah, Yurikova going for that deep one, trying to make it dip, and unfortunately it's just, just too long. 20-13, here we go. This is good quality beach volleyball and there's a clip at the net but it goes out so still six game points six set points here to draw this level at one set of peach a piece and we're going to go into a tie break oh that's a lovely that's a great dig there from the purples Oh, well done. Singing over, over on one. That's beautiful work from her. As we said, when the wind's behind you, you've got to do what you can to win the point. She chooses to go over on one on the dig, and it's good enough to win the set for that team. Well, we're going to have a tie break now. 21-18 to the greens, 21-14 to the purples. So here we go. It's tie break time. First to 15. And this wind is just not letting up. In fact, if anything, it's got a little bit stronger. It's a lovely little shot there with Louis. Beautiful shot. It's just the start that Team in Green really needed after dropping that second set. It's a great line over from Yurikova. They're playing at the so-called weekend as well, so that's quite a crucial point early on in the set. Yeah, these are big points, aren't they? If the Greens can get a couple of points here at the, at the harder end, this could really be a, a statement to the opposition and 
They had a little chance here. They're going to defend this. Oh, and, and there you see an example of how the ball just bent down over. She, you know, the court's almost twice as long with this wind. Yeah, yeah you're exactly right. The, the length of the court, it does get longer in this wind, and it's a beautiful shot from to Singigi over. Really, really good. And the ball just dips so much that it's so hard for the defending team to control. Yeah, Sinagova just having a little chat there with uh, her colleague. And that's a lovely little cut. But a touch on the net. The referee had given it. She'd won the point anyway. And the Greens go 2-1 up here. You see a little touch on the net, but it doesn't matter. So shot was good enough. Beautiful work. This time Healy. We saw the line over from Urukova. And this time Healy with the cut shot. Beautiful work. Ex-Australian junior beach player Healy. Got all the shots. Well, that sun really has gone very bright all of a sudden. And uh, that one just got a little bit messy. Just messed up. Said earlier, really awkward conditions, Adrian, out there today. The wind, the sun, all the external factors that play a big part in beach volleyball. Very, very difficult for these players. Yeah. Oh, that's nicely played, though. And, uh, yep, they've turned over. It's... Uh, Every five points, of course, they switch ends. Oh, and that's a little bit of a mistake, isn't it? That's a... <laughs> They'll be unha unhappy with that team. Uh, sorry, that play, Eurokova and Healy. Letting the ball just drop on the floor. They're both quite far back in their stance. And the yeah. ball just drops in front of them. Well, the team, uh, players having a great time here in Great Yarmouth. It's, uh, they're really enjoying going around the, the country to the seaside resorts. Here's a chance out set, wasn't so good. Beautiful play that from Singing Eva, one of the best blockers on the ladies tour. You saw the first time the question was asked of her, she pulled back off the net, but the second time she had to block, she stayed there, stayed strong. Really good decision making from Elfie that time, and it gives them the lead. Yeah, she's really very dominant at the net, and she's up there again. This time she doesn't get the block in. It's a point to Greens, it's four each. Again, possibly, okay there, she stayed to block, good decision. If the ball's tight to the net on the spike, it's good to stay and block, but as soon as the ball comes off the net, you have to pull your block in beach volleyball. Yeah. There you go again, Elfie pulls the block. Oh, off the top of the net, that's unlucky. And uh, there's a little bit of talking in beach volleyball, isn't there? Look at that, that was unlucky. A little bit of talking occasionally. I just heard one of the girls go, there you go. And, you know, there's a little bit of winding up occasionally, isn't there? Just to try and get the blood boiling on the other side. Yeah, you know, I think uh, in all sports, you'll do anything just to get one up on the opponent, whether that's body language or a little bit of talk, just to try and get a little bit of advantage, swing your way. And that's a beautiful shot cross court. Yeah. This really is a great, great semi-final, this one. Great hit here. Look at that, the power on that. And it's still going into the sea. Really good. You'll see that most players, they'll wrap their wrist right over the ball to get top spin, just like a tennis player will do in a forehand to make that ball dip. And it's a beautiful shot from Elfie. And that point has gone. I think the, uh, the official, they're calling a... What was that called? I'm not really sure. We're not sure here at this side. But they, uh, the point went to greens and... Uh, they weren't complaining, that one's long. Again, you see the wind again playing a massive factor in this game. The wind just picks up and puts pace on the ball and the ball flies out the back of play. So there's just a one point difference now. Really good battle this is. Oh, what a brilliant touch that was. It kept that in play. Sinagova again. Oh, she's got a, oh, she can't go there. She'd have uh, put herself into the Red Bull tent, I think, if she'd have done it for that one. It's a great hustle by the team in purple, but really just good persistence by the green team of Eurokova and Healy. Very, very good in offence. Good control in the spike from the girls in green. This really has been a high-quality match. Um, oh, and the ball's overset this time from Healy and singing it over. She just says thanks very much and pounds the ball down into the sand. Doesn't need two invitations there, Elfie. So, so tight. 8-7, the Greens lead. And they're not taking a big advantage here of this left-hand side. They need to score a few more points here. And that's one of them. They'll be happy with that. They've gone 9-7 ahead. See this on the replay. There's the block, but it just wasn't successful. You just see Katja could have just formed the block a little bit more and pushed her hands over the net a little bit more just to form the block as it was the green team found the gap. 
Oh, that's incredible. Well, there's a celebration here. This is a very unorthodox shot. Look at that. It was a it was a set that maybe she thought her opponent wasn't uh, her colleague wasn't ready, and she just knocked it over. As we said, in these conditions, it's vital that sometimes you just do something a little bit different to keep control. And that little bump going over on two did the job for the team. But again, there's nothing in this semi-final. Yeah. Absolutely nothing between these two teams. Pressure's on now. It's 10-8. Green's lead, and they're still on the good side. At this point, it's vital. Oh, my God. Goodness, I can't believe that that one just dipped over. That's beautiful work, that, from Eurocaver and Healy. I mean, Healy, again, as we mentioned earlier, drops the block. She stays still and reacts to the hit, but she gets the touch. And that touch might go over on one, but in this wind, it's good enough to win the point. And the serve is so strong there. The wind dipped it down, and, well, it really is tough. 12-8 now. They've changed ends. This is a big chance for the Purples to try and get some points for the advantage of the wind. Yeah, they're at the good end, the purples. They're going to need a big push now and a really good end. That's a great set and a lovely little pokey over the top there. The left hand of Katja Glass, she's high there. Pokey, as soon you can tell that most players will get the pokey out when the ball's tight to the net because they can't get a hard hand behind it, so they have to get underneath the ball. There's a great pokey from her. Oh, the serve's gone though, and that could be a very expensive mistake. Only two points now. Yeah, it's a, a bit of a bad time to leak a point there for the team in purple. There's a good crowd behind us on the promenade here watching this. That one straight into the net, so okay, what they've got couple away of with that, the team in purple at that stage to make a service error. They've been led off the hook here from Eurocover and Healy. They've also erred from the service line, so we're back to just three points. The sun blasts out yet again. Really is one of those changeable days. Here's a good opportunity now for the purples. Try and get back in here. Greens go long. Oh, that's a good hit with the left hand. You know, it's such a good shot, this. When the block's pulled, as it is, we've been speaking about this a lot today, but there's a big gap that opens up in the middle of the court, and that's a great shot. Really is very tight now. 13-11. Here's a chance. Oh, and that one doesn't come off. And it's going to be match point. Oh, that was so unfortunate there. Agonizingly close for the team in purple, and it's not only match point, but they go to the strong end for this match point. So, odds very much in favor yeah. of this green team now to take a place in the final. Got a great chance here, haven't they? They've got three match points. Serve is good, it's it's an ace. So, it's Petra Joikova and Joe Healy who take the match in the tie break set, and it really was. Uh, yeah, it was it was a strange match with the wind, wasn't it, Louis? But you know there was a lot of class on show there today. Yeah, we've seen good control from both sides here. Unfortunately, there's only one winner, and that's Eurocaver and Healy. They just made the most of that really, really strong end into the breeze, and that's good enough to take them through to this afternoon's final. Very, very good from them. Welcome back to the Volleyball England Beach Tour. Stage three here at Great Yarmouth. We're going to get straight into the first men's semi-final. Jake Sheath and Robin Mitsubrotsky. Robin, of course, uh, usually with Tom Lord and has won the past two grand finals with him. Well, it's a new partnership here, and he's up against Ryan Stout and Matt Hunter. And they join the first set at 13-8. It's Jake Sheath, serves here. He actually won uh, the previous event uh, with a different partner, with Lazoki in, uh, in Western. And uh, his usual partner isn't actually here, Chris Gregory, is he? No, Chris Gregory's unfortunately ill at the moment. Uh, we, we wish him well and hopefully he'll be back for Weymouth. Um, but yeah, Jake Sheaf has, has teamed up with Robin Mietzabrotsky. Very much an international pairing here. Both sides have represented GB and they're playing against the GB development pairing of uh, Ryan Stout and Matt Hunter who are actually playing in their first semi-final. They have had a great tournament here and they've done very, very well to make their first semi-final but they just find themselves six points down at the moment. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that the, the per team in purple are the big favourites to win this particular match, but um, and it's all got to be done on the sand, hasn't it? it it's OK on paper. Oh, that's a monster hit with that's the left hand. Lovely. What a shot. Lovely, that from Stout. You can see he gets sucked into the middle. 
but he manages to turn his hips and legs in the air and shape his body back across the court and hits a great angle. Very, very good from them. That was very classy indeed. They fly off to the, the European Junior Championships in two weeks' time. So they're going to be looking for a good result, good practice, and this is a pretty good pretty good game within their preparation for yep. that competition. Very competitive uh, match for sure, this one is. Jake Sheaf used to be with his brother Luke, who's joined the army, so that's one's into the net, and here we switch around. So 15-10, Sheaf and Mitsubotsky lead. And again, another big hit with the left hand cross court. I mean, that's a great shot. You see Ryan get his approach, he gets out on his feet, point cross court, his body faces cross court, and he, the ball ends up cross court too. It's a big swing from him. And really, they're holding their own in this first set, this team in green. Yeah, well, we've already seen just a few points of some really good angles coming off the greens, and that one just touches the, the defensive touch there, so it'd be point to the purples. Just That's see. Shot of high class from Sheaf, takes the ball high, rolls the wrist over the top, and finds that line over shot, line over the block. Yeah. 16-11. Here we go, here's a chance, Sheaf comes in with a big hit. And uh, I remember saying before that he's, he's usually quite a defensive player when he uh, used to play with his brother, but he's certainly, uh, he, he's come out as a much more attacking player in recent times, and we're seeing some big shots from him we've, we've not seen before. Yeah, not to be underestimated, Jake oh. Sheaf is sure, he's fast, he's quick, and he's agile, he's good in the air, and he's a powerful boy. As we've just seen again, that's two shots, first one cross court, and we see he's not a one-trick pony, shapes that one. <laughs> And yeah. hits the line beautifully. And of course, from the left-hand side, a big advantage with this win. The wind is not letting up at all. And you can see here the serve. Well, they managed to dig it out, but yeah, Mr. Minster Brodsky, thank you very much. And he just tops it over. Yeah, it's really good battling from the team in green, but you can wrap that one up for oh. yeah, to Brodsky. That one's a bit of a present for him. Yeah, and Jake Sheaf just puts in a monster serve here, straight down the middle. You can't even call it, I don't think they, have, they even saw it, never mind having a chance of a husband and wife shot that we've talked about in the past. And uh, Even our MC shaking his head, that was an incredible serve, and here we go again. again. And there's another one, he's just unplayable at the moment, isn't he? Into that win, the powerful topspin jump serve, it's going to dip and it's going to dip fast. And unfortunately Stout just couldn't react to that one and they take the first set, she from Yetz 21-11, and Jake Sheaf looking pretty unplayable. Into the second set. And what are Stout and Hunter going to do about this? Well, they're serving from the left side, which is a little bit easier. With that wind bringing the ball in, and there's the cross court, but it goes out and wide. That's a great shot from Hunter. It's agonizingly close, and this time it doesn't work for him, but you can see an inch the other side of the tape and that's a great shot but it just misses out this time yeah and that one was out as well the serve out well one of those uh, tough days for the camera crew as well the sun is coming in and out of these clouds it really is uh, also must be a little bit awkward for the volleyball players but not as awkward as this wind this wind certainly is uh, giving problems there's that left-handed shot again, cross-court, but it's just wide again, it's a fraction wide. They're certainly trying the angles here, aren't they, Louis? Yeah, and they have to go for broke, they're the underdogs in this game, so they have to try and find the tape or get close to the tape and put the opposing team under as much pressure as possible. But this is, uh, this is the alarm bells must be ringing. Well, there's a good hit, that was certainly good power on that one. But uh, that, this is the difficult end. Yeah, for the purples and they've got a lead and they're actually de defending a difficult uh, end to, to play from. Yeah, I think as we said earlier, is if, if you can get as close to winning that bad end as possible, it puts you in a really good position. You want to try and scrape as many points as possible at that bad end. Psychologically, it makes such a difference yeah. just to try and get as close to winning that bad end as possible. There's the number one finger, so that was served to the number one player on the opposing team. Oh, one-handed stop. Kef. <laughs> well, something went, uh, that was nearly good defence. 4-3 now, and we have had a swap. Every seven points, they'll swap ends. 
And this is where you're going to expect that the team in purple are going to start dominating. Join us. Good play from start that. The, the set's tight from Hunter. You see the ball goes fairly high on the set. It means that the ball drifts closer to the net, but with the wind behind, and Stout uses the block to the advantage. He had no other option there either. Good play from the young side there. Yeah, they're certainly giving it a good go here. Here's the big chance. A little touch over the top. We go again. Oh, what a block. What a block from Sheaf. He's on fire at the moment. He's looking for his uh, second tournament win with a different partner here as well. And he got some great height there. Yeah, you don't. You, it's rare that you see Jake Sheaf in that position at the net doing the blocking. But as we said earlier, he's such a good all round player that he can adapt to anything. Yeah. And that's a beautiful block from him. Hands are high and over the net. Does the for his side. Puts one into the net, which is unusual. Good crowd here watching this, enjoying themselves. There's a good crowd behind on the promenade as well. Just uh, standing behind us and uh, enjoying this. Here's a chance for Mitsubrotsky and a little touch on the defence. And uh, a few things just not going the green team's way. You see they're starting to look a little bit deflated here. Yeah, it's important that they don't feel too bad because they're right in this set. And really if they can... Get a couple of quick points here, cheap points, they're right back in it. They might be two points down now. Yeah. But really, in this wind, it's still anybody's game. A couple of points doesn't make a big difference in these conditions. Really important that you stay positive out there. Jake Sheaf to serve. Well, he's put some monsters in so far. And he's just... Uh, and that's not too bad either. They've managed to defend it well, though, the Greens. And that's a beautiful touch cross court while Sheaf loses his serve. You know what, that's a beautiful shot from Stout. He's so far off the net that he knows he can't get any power on it, but he's thinking, what else can he do to yeah. put the opposing side under pressure? And that's to try and find the side table, get as close to the side as, as possible. And that's a great shot from Ryan Stout. It really is. Oh, that's a big hit. And Mitsubrotsky. Well, he's, uh, he's played with Tom Lord in the past, hasn't he? And he's they've won the last two grand finals down at Boscombe Beach in Bournemouth and uh, you know who's Robin like Robin is, isn't normally with Jake who's Robin normally with Louis um, he's, he's sort of in a bit of a transitional season at the moment obviously he played with Tom Lord uh, they had they played on the world tour last year um, and basically now that that partnership's come to an end he's playing this one with Jake and then he's teaming up in the next one uh, with New Zealand international player Kirk Pittman um, so he's playing with a, a couple of new partners um, and I think it's quite nice to have a bit of a mixture. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. And that's one of the things that we, you know, I certainly didn't realise uh, in my first season on the tour a few years ago that a lot of players do switch around during the season. And, and that's why we have the Champions Race, of course, where you look at who individually has done well during the season. Yeah, and at the moment, I think it's Mark Garcia, Kid and Cole Butcher that lead the Champions Race, but an individual can win it, um, obviously, with, by playing with multiple partners throughout a season. Yeah. I don't think Jake Sheaf can be too far away from oh. winning again. What a chase that's, that is. That's incredible. They've got that one back. Now, can they get the point out of it? Oh, here's a chance. Jake Sheaf comes for the hit. He's gone over the top. Oh, this is a brilliant rally. This has got to be one of the best rallies of the day, and that's just a miss hit at the net. Oh, but the play beforehand was spectacular, wasn't it? Yeah, both teams choose to go line over the block, and both defenders, it's really the defenders and underdog to always get that line over shot. But great defending by both sides, and it's just unfortunate that Stout just lost control of the spike. Yeah, there he is again. That's long, and uh, yeah, I think Stout was trying something we were talking about earlier. You know, he's hitting a lot of left-handed sort of cross-court shots, and he was just trying something a little yeah. bit clever there. And that time you can see he's obviously hit the last one in the net. That time he just gets caught underneath the ball, and it's important that when you spike, you keep the ball in front of you. See the ball's in front of Stout there. It's much better. Oh, that's a lovely touch. Greens do well to keep that going. But here's going to be a chance for Sheaf. Oh, that's beautifully played. And it's not always the power that wins the points here. He's just drawn the opponent in who thinks there's going to be a big hit. And then it's over the top. Yeah, again, you don't have to hit the ball hard. But what we'd say is if you have to hit the ball hard, you've got to uh, high, you've got to hit it fast as well. And that's quite a quick shot, quick line over from Sheaf. Very effective from him. Nice play from the Greens. Lovely. You could almost say this is a standard sort of way to answer a serve, isn't it? Set, big hit cross court. Yeah, Thank they, you very much. For they call point. it side out in a 
beach volleyball, the, the sort of opportunity to win the point on the opposition serve. And it's usually the team that side out the best that, that come on and win the game. Now, there's a little chat here because they're saying that uh, he had too long a touch. Yeah, we just missed it on the replay. It wasn't that instant. It was the actual set that uh, it's a tough one, isn't it? it you only get a you've got to just touch the ball, not hold on to it. Hand setting is really the toughest skill within beach volleyball. It has to come out clean. You can't hold it too long. And there must be no down motion in your hands when the ball's uh, in, the, in the athlete's hands. Now, that time, the referee suggested that with Mieta Zabrotsky, that the ball took two touches within the hand. So it might have come out the left hand first and then out the right hand, yeah. which causes the ball to spin. And that's why the decision got called against him. So Mieta Zabrotsky serves here and puts one into the net. He's... Uh He's not been serving too well in his semi-final so far. He's really tried to put some action on the ball. And, you know, I suppose with the wind against, it does dip. And sometimes it dips early. And, and that's, you can't yeah. do anything about it. And what you have to take into consideration, obviously, they're, they're trying to jump serve. So the, the toss uh, is affected when you try and serve. You have to throw the ball up. And obviously, that can get caught in the wind as well. So serving yeah. itself is quite a tough skill in these conditions. So they are going to leak a few serves in the net and out the back. Another power shot from Jake Sheaf. He's really showing his muscles off in this semi. Yeah, he's on fire. Some big power coming out of this boy, isn't there, at the moment? Yeah, Stout and Hunter have gone after him a little bit. They, they're directing most of the serves at him, so he hits and he's answered everything, to be honest. Uh, Mitsuki Brotsky gets the touch over the top. Again, the wind's behind Sheaf and Hunter here. And you can't set the ball too high because the ball's just going to drift onto the net. And with a blocker like Mietza Brotsky, he's going to love that and take that present every time. Yep. Chief puts one into the net himself, though. But uh, they've got a good lead here. They've got a good four-point lead. Five-point lead, I should say. And, well, first to 21. It is four points. I thought so. Score was a little bit slow there. Here's a chance. Mitsubrotsky. He's good. And this is bread and butter to these guys. Well, you can see there's a, there's a block there from Hunter, and there's a, there's a defender there in Ryan Stout, and there's just that little bit of a gap between the two. And he finds it beautifully. I mean, that's a great shot. It's, it's a high risk shot because you might hit the block, but Mietzabrotsky is a good player, and he can hit that nine times out of ten. Uh, here's a chance now. Sheaf is. Oh, he's. That's. Well, what's been called there? I think a touch, touch on the net, maybe. Ball's bumped on from Robin, as you just see it gets oh, yeah. caught in the wind. Yeah, and touch on the net. In all fact, fairness, Matt Hunt has done very well there to read Jake Sheaf's body language to see that he's going to hit the ball. Yeah, but just a little bit of a net, net felony there. Greens put their uh, hands on their heads because they realised that Sheaf had gone long, and they've just that was a, that was an equivalent of an own goal, I suppose, in beach volleyball. The ball's gone wide, but you've touched the net, so the point goes against you. Chief not happy with that one, I don't think. It's a great angle there. He's up high. It's a great shot. I think he's, he thinks that ball's gone in. But <laughs> he thinks he touched the line, and he got a good view of it as well, straight down the sideline. Beautiful view here. It's uh, lovely sunshine here at Great Yarmouth. Guys are having a great time, and there's a nice touch. And you just heard the call of line there from Jake Sheaf and Mr. Brodsky doesn't need the telling a second time straightforward. Again, Robin's really come to the party the last few points, been very, very steady. And it's a beautiful shot over the top of Hunter's block. Oh, the wind helping out there and Mitsuki Brodsky. <laughs> you don't see that very often at players at this level that completely not having a clue where that ball was. Look at him. <laughs> it nearly hit him That's on the head. incredible from Stout. It's far too tight to the net, and he has to do anything he can to get underneath it. And luckily, yeah, gets caught in the wind and does the job for his side. Beautiful That's from Stout. Uh, and that probably goes on a bloopers tape at some stage. We did have one at Western where it was very similar, and it actually bounced on uh, the guy's head, <laughs> and uh, it made quite a nice replay. But you see, there's Stouts all over that ball in defence, and unfortunately, just can't get his shoulders round back towards his target. He should really try and get an angle back to his target with his upper body. Fortunately, to flex out of play, but it's a great touch. I mean, he's done well just to get there in the first place. Well, it's been very high quality here, but the purples are looking good. Sheaf and Mitsubrotsky get the block in, and it's now match point. You just see the importance. He's quite far back there, Robin, but he really pushes his block and his left arm's high. Great block and match point to Sheaf and Mitsubrotsky. 
Here we go. Crowd are clapping. Greens are certainly can hold their head up high. They've given them a good go. We're going to see a lot more of these in years to come. They'll be so happy with this performance. It's not always about the score. The score maybe merits a game a little bit closer than this. Yeah, so much difference in experience, isn't there? Age of the, the players on the in the green and the, the purples. Experience is going to tell here at the end of the day, but exactly right. But the performance really does merit a closer game than this for the young side. Take a lot of confidence out of this game, that's for sure. Yeah. Sheaf's gone into the net, so they'll change ends. See this here, Sheaf getting this one all wrong. Maybe they've just gone off the boil a little bit. Still five match points. Sun blasts out again. Oh, there it is. It's all over, and it's Mitsubotsky who finishes it off, and they'll get, it, get themselves through to the final later today. Really good performance from the Purples, and they're going to be the favourites, I would say, in the final. Two class players. But the boys in green, Hunter and Stout, can certainly hold their heads up. They score 21-11, 21-15. So welcome back to Great Yarmouth for the Volleyball England Beach Tour Stage 3 and it's the women's second semi-final with Vicky Palmer and Alexandra Vajova up against Gabriela Madrika and Laura Plonka. Well, Vajova and Palmer took the first set 22-20, a very tight affair and we're going to join the action in the second set. So Madrika to serve, having just uh, lost the first set. 22-20, really was very tight. And here we are at the start of the second set. And that one goes wide. Yeah, Vicky Palmer, one of the loudest players on the tour. Celebrated that one, enjoyed that one, Vicky. And it's Vicky to serve, and what a serve that is into the wind, deep over the right shoulder of Madrika. And Dream start for the team in purple. Vicky Palmer to serve again. Watch this one just dives into the net. Well, our Plunker actually uh, played with Vicky Palmer in uh, the last event at Western and won the event. So quite strange that they're going head to head here in this particular semi-final. But this is what happens in beach volleyball sometimes. Maybe a little bit of extra spice that they know each other so well. Yeah, of course. I mean, it, yeah, it is a strange one beach volleyball. As we mentioned earlier, players do seem to mix and match their partners until they find a partnership that's just right and then you'll find that they'll stay together for quite a long time oh, and that serve again the wind having its effect they've started great here from the service line that there was a service hour earlier from Palmer but really they've gone into the wind they've served tough they've served flat and they've let the ball dip yeah very good start this well taking advantage 4-1 up Left hand side, big advantage. And they'd be expecting to get this lead early on. Oh, beautiful shot. They really are nailing these shots here. Alexandra for Jova just literally opening up her shoulders and playing the ball down the line. Great shot from her. Not over rotating, which is a common problem in that shot. Oh, follows up with a great serve as well, Adrian. It's <laughs> incredible, isn't it? Here's the power. And. Uh, Laura Plunker can't do anything with that one. That's too good. So 6-1, what a start that was from the left-hand side. Sun comes out very heavily behind the cloud. And now they really are romping this, 7-1. They served well into the wind and now the wind's behind them. They've taken pace off the ball, but they've served deep. And that's really, really hard because obviously with the wind behind, the ball gets quicker and quicker. So that ball's a hard ball to receive. Too long. Yeah, try to replicate it again, Vadova, and it just goes long. Oh, they can afford to make a couple of uh, errors. They've got such a good lead here. And there's the serve going well. You can just see. You see Vicky Palmer there. The ball's into the net, but it's important if the ball's into the net, you must get lower than the net. She did that. She did that well, but she didn't manage to get her shoulders pointing back into play to keep the ball up in play. Yeah. The wind's, the wind's doing all sorts out here this afternoon. Oh, and well, that's just too easy, really. But the thing is, that's where the wind does help out so much, isn't it? That 
you know, yeah. you, you can afford to go for those long distance shots and the, the court is so much longer. Yeah, again, you know, right. my, one, my only one criticism there is that Palmer possibly could have pulled the block there because she wasn't going to hit the ball hard and when you feel as a blocker that the ball's not going to be hit hard, it's important that you retreat off the net and get back to defend your space instead of trying to block the space that you were trying to do earlier. Well, the Greens are quite fired up here. Remember, they were 7-1 down a few minutes ago. Oh, and an ace. Well, you don't see many like that. That was that was quite a precise serve. It wasn't a power serve. Uh, you know, a bit of feel for Palmer on that one. You just see the ball dip. You can take pace off the ball there, and the ball will just get caught in the wind and dip last minute. Yeah. Beautiful serve, really. And it's really hard. You can see how hard it is to play in this wind. Yeah, that one was long, but that's well defended. And it's 8-6 now. Beautiful shot from Palmer, that big spike cross court. Too long. See this, that's a very close call. Just see it nearly. If it touches the tape by affection, it's in. It looked like that, uh, that, that Laura Plonka tried to play that one as well and it just missed her <laughs> platform and she might have been a little bit lucky there. On another day, it might have clipped the, clipped the hand and gone out. Yeah, you reckon she changed her mind after the ball had gone past? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's a, here's a decent rally. That's one of mine, that is. I tend to do that quite a lot. <laughs> oh, this is a good play. Oh, really good play. And the Greens win. The Greens win the point and they pulled it back to eight all, considering they were 7-1 down. That's brilliant play from them. That, that's under no fault of Palmer as well. She does well to dig the ball in defence. Just can't quite get the angle back into the middle of the court. But for the reply, that is. <laughs> that is a big hit. We said earlier, what's great about this is the block's being pulled. And it's always good that when the block's being pulled, you then try and hit deep oh, middle on the court sense. because that's where the space is. I think we said it earlier today, and it's such an effective shot, that, from Palmer. Well, that's a big hit on the men's game, that one. That was really travelling. Well, that's a lovely touch down the line. And Laura Plonka, very fired up there. Her and Madrika definitely battling away every point here. That's a beautiful shot from Plonka. Over the top of the block, too fast for Vadova in defence. You were saying to me earlier, Gabriela Madrid has just uh, had a baby recently. Yeah, she's been away for a little while. I think this is her first one back. And uh, it just shows she's she's one of the, the great players of the ladies talk, Gabby Madrika. And to come back straight away and make a semi-final and be competing is fantastic work from her. Love really great player, great control. Lara Plonka currently leading the champions race and the women's by quite a distance. That's a good pressure serve by Palmer again. Here we are, 11 9 in the second set. Remember, the girls from Purple lead by one set still. This is the best of three sets. 11 9. This really is as tight as the first set, which went to, to extra points. That one gets a touch on the way past. Boom, that's a big, big hit, that. I think, yeah, Gabby Madrika, she's high and said it before, it's really, really hard to defend the ball above waist height. Yeah. Great shot, very effective from Gabby there. That one's wide. Trying to put a bit too much in on the serve. Well, the conditions here, the, the wind, if anything, is getting stronger and stronger. And I think that's what the weather forecast has been for today. So you see that one going too long. We're only a fraction long. But it's, uh, it is the one aspect of beach volleyball. With it being outdoors, it's the one thing that can really cause a bit of chaos out there. And, uh, of course, you don't get that with the indoor game. Uh, not, no external factors in the indoor game. Lots out here on the sand. Yeah. Oh, that's a lovely touch there. Just reached across. You know what? She's done so well there because the set was tight as well. Great work from Alexandra Vajova. Over the top. Oh, great defence. And it's, they've kept it alive. Oh, but Blanc has put it wide. And she's not happy with that at all because her partner did brilliantly to keep that one alive. Wow, well, this one, 15-11. Purples have just got themselves a bit of a lead now. Oh, well, the set wasn't great there, but they got away with it on the greens. For me, again, they've stayed at the net to block that ball, but they're a good two and a half metres off the net. It would have been more beneficial for Vadova to get off the net and play defence that time. But they're still pretty comfortable here. She played very well, Alex Vadova. 
Yeah. Being hypercritical there. That was yards long. That really did catch the wind. 15-13. Been such a major factor as we just mentioned. Well, yeah, that one, I think, that wasn't, yeah, it's gone to green. I thought there was a touch on the net there that the uh, official was calling. And uh, there was no doubt there was a touch, but maybe... Definitely a touch, but yeah. Madrika finishes the ball with a beautiful spike off the overpass. And that one's just in. Similar to what we saw from Ryan Stout earlier, the set's tight, you have to get underneath the ball. And, oh. yeah, very rarely you see a ball that high win a point in beach volleyball, but in this wind... Just anything goes. Well, oh, that, that's a that's a giveaway. You know they'll be disappointed with that because they're 16-14, and they've oh. let they've let them back in the game. It's gone to 16 all, and incredibly, it, you know, this is the side where you you're picking up points easily or more easy, and now it's gone to 16 apiece. Yeah, you see that miss serve previously. That's the difference between 17-15, and obviously 16 all. Here we go. Chance of purples. Oh, they've just dinked it over the top. 17 16 ahead. Palmer goes on two. It was a good dig from Vadova. Left the shot open for the second ball spike from Palmer, but it's just long. Game on here, I think. Adrian very, yeah. very tight in this second set. That served too wide. Was that good? I think so. This is really getting so competitive. Yeah, that was in. And uh, yeah, there's a bit of frustration there. We've seen it before. That line over is a real popular shot today into that wind. 18 all. Nothing in this. Very, very important points here. You know, there's going to be quite a few more rallies yet before they change ends. So there's a real chance for the Greens to, to get back here. Wow, what a scramble. Oh! That's incredible. Well, they're challenging. They want to challenge this. That what's happening there, Louis? Basically, Team Madrid of Blanca are claiming that there was a hand over at the net. But for me, I don't. I think it's a good decision from the referee. The hand wasn't fully over the net. It was a good shot, followed up by a beautiful play. Oh, this is amazing. Look at this. It's, it's defence and suddenly it's straight into attack. Beautiful because it just does the job for them again in this win. Sometimes you just have to do what it takes to win the point. It's match points as well. 2018. Beautiful touch cross court. But they've still got to save one more here. This is beautiful play from Lara Plonka. She's got a lot of experience. She's made two finals. But she's on the verge of going out of this final. Again, she has to the, serve now. They're at the good end, and really, they've still got a great chance in this set if they can save this one. And they have done. So again, now we look at it. They're at the good end. They have to change sides every seven points. So at the score at 20 all, they've yep. got two points here to make it count before the change of ends. Yeah. So two really, they've got two points to try and win here to snatch the set before they go to the weekend. Two is all they need. But well defended off the serve. Here's a, a chance big now. Point this one. Oh, big hit. Great shot from Madrika. The, the ball the block was pulled. Took advantage of that, Madrika. Set point for Greens to level up. Oh, great defence. Oh, a miscommunication with the Greens. Oh my goodness, this is a rally and a half here. And they're still going and they've won it. Oh, they're brilliant point here for the Purples. That's a big point at a very big time for Palmer and Vidova. They have the change of ends now at 21 all, and you'd say they have the good end. They've got to be favourites with the serve yeah. into this breeze now to take the game 2-0. They've got a good end. They've got seven points from this side, surely. Oh, that's a monster hit, though, from Madrika. And Vidova did so well to get a hand on it. I mean, she just, if she just turns her body a little bit more in court, that ball will go towards Palmer. If you look, the body's facing outside of the court, so the ball goes that way. Here we go. Set point for Greens yet again. Oh! They are throwing themselves around this sand so hard. She was being, Lara Plonka was being encouraged there. She's got a lot of sand to wipe down off her body. 
22 all. They're so agile, these players, and what a great serve that is to follow up from Vicky Palmer. Big point that was. It's going to be the first point, match point here for Purples from this side. Been in this position countless times, Palmer. Very experienced now. Oh, it's going to be long, and it's all over, and the Purples have taken it. Palmer and Bajova will be through to the final, and now the plonker, she will miss out on her first final of the Volleyball England Beach Tour this season. What a match that was, and, well, 22-20, 24-22, there's really nothing in it, is there? The game was in the balance. The girls in blue had a set point at the good end, and unfortunately they couldn't convert and it let the team in purple back in with the serve from the good end and they took advantage. What a game that was, both sets with just two points of difference there. But it's the team in purple that go through to this afternoon's final. And we'll be back with the finals. We've still got one more semi-final to come, the men's second semi. We'll watch after the break. And the last of the semi-finals are up now. It's Dominic Pexer and Andrei Drivnovsky up against Mark Garcia, Kidd and Carl Butcher. Garcia, Kidd and Butcher leading the champions race so far on the tour. So Mark Garcia, Kidd and Carl Butcher, 17 all. And they serve us off in the greens. And Louis, you know, you know a little bit about these two in the green, don't you? Yeah, work with them currently coaching. Garcia, Kidd and Butcher, both good friends of mine. We teamed up at the start of the season. And, uh, we're enjoying quite a successful season at the moment, really going quite well. They've yep. made big, big strides from last year. They were taking sevens and eights. I think they made one semi-final last year. And this year, they've this is their third semi-final. Yeah, they've, they've played ever so well. reached the final at Western. And to be honest, I, I remember uh, commentating on that match. And they actually scored exactly the same number of points as their opponent in uh, in that final. But uh, just uh, it just the way the cookie crumbled that it just went against them but yeah, it really they, was a match that could they, have gone either they way. They really felt that they gave that to Sheep and the Zocchi on the day and they they felt in control of the game and the way they said they've never felt so much in control and not come out with the victory. So I think that one hurt quite hard but you know they're looking looking to put it right here. Yeah. And it's it's a good start. They got set point. Oh served into the net there. Carl Butcher. 1920. Of course, this wind, as always, is still as strong as ever from right to left. So, certainly favouring the team on the left, and they've taken the point. And there's the first set. Mark Garcia, kid. Butcher that stays aggressive in his approach, swings hard line, beautiful work from him, and they they snatch this first set. And really, both teams very very similar. Not the biggest teams on tour, but very very good control. And I mean, on windy days like today. This is a chance for these two teams to really shine and have a good go at the championship here. Drifnowski and Pexa in purple. They're going to have a. They've had a fairly decent tour this season themselves as well. So two, uh, four top players here in this semi-final. I think they're the top two teams on the champions race, Adrian. So a pretty big game this one for both sides. Garcia just. Takes the ball really low there and ends up blowing the ball out the back of the court. Oh, there's the touch over. And a little look up at the official. Are you sure you want to give that one to the Greens? You know what, that's a, that's a great shot. Janowski not really happy. Thought there might have been a little touch on the net there. but I think there was a bit of contact between the legs underneath the net and he was just checking to see if you know whose fault it was. And Nothing too wrong with a game of footsie. Beach <laughs> that was right on the line there. This is nicely played here. Yeah, uh, Pexa and Janowski, they've got great skills and they really do hustle hard for each other, this pairing. Yeah. And this uh, semi-final by a long way is far from over. Well, there's a little bit of luck. He should uh, get himself a lottery card after that one. That hits the net hard. Just bobbles over. And that really is... Everybody loves it. They always apologise for the net tickling serve, but no one's ever that sorry because you always want to take that really cheap free point. Could be crucial at the end of this set, that one serve. Yeah, and Garcia, Kid and Butcher are all at sea at the moment. Things aren't good. They're 4-1 down and they're actually playing from the easy end. So the Greens are really going to have to sort of get yeah. themselves sorted out here. There's a big hit from Butcher. 
that's better from Butcher. We saw previously that he wasn't aggressive on his run-up. And this time here, you see that he's aggressive, he's high. And that's a great angle cross-court. Janowski's a good defender. Can't deal with that one, mate. Yeah. There's a nice hit from Garcia, kid. Strong server. Here's Butcher coming in, but that set's not the best. And here's a chance now for the Purples to do something. Beautiful control from both sides. I think the team in green will say that sometimes they openly say they struggle with their setting. It's the one contact that they might struggle with, but that's better. Oh, Look at that, get caught in the wind. Dronovsky's thought the ball was going right towards him and then ended up having to dive at full stretch there to try and keep the point alive. He was like a goalkeeper defending a Cristiano Ronaldo free kick there, wasn't he? He totally went yeah. the wrong way and set going wrong there from Garcia Kidd. Mark Garcia Kidd. Sorry, they've done so well to keep that point alive and keep the rally going. And Butcher can only find the net that time. I won't ask you to comment on this, Louis, but um, it was a position you're in, but it's certainly something I've noticed. Garcia, Kid and Butcher are certainly quite free to have a little dig at each other from time to time and keep it quite feisty on their side of the net. And sometimes, you know, that, that's actually good for teams to have that bit of edge in them. And, uh, not always just be giving each other a high five, even though one person's messed up. Yeah, for, for me, it's something that we have actually spoke about quite a lot, that there's, you want that that sort of feistiness and you want that will to win but there's a fine line between it being a positive and then being a negative for your side so as long as it's in a positive note and they can have a go and they can tell each other what they've done wrong that's fine but as long as it doesn't get personal and they, it starts taking their thoughts away from the game and their tactics and what they have to do it's only then that it becomes a problem for them I think we saw it uh, was it Skegness that they started blowing up a little bit in their performance when yeah yeah. Went to pull a little bit in that second set, but they've, they've come on leaps and bounds from there, to be well, honest. Well, I wasn't going to ask you to draw you into that comment, but fair enough, Louis. You know, that's a, that's a fair point. And, uh, you know, I think you're 100% right there that, uh, you know, having that little bit of extra feist in the set certainly can help. Oh, there's a big block there. And that's a... He was big over the net here. There's no way through this one, is there? You know what? That's a really good example for any young blocker because Pex is high but he manages to get his feet pointing back into court and he's got a high right arm and that means that if the ball hits the block it's going bang into the middle of the court. Beautiful work from them really. Come out, come out really, really strongly here, Pexa and Janowski. Yeah, Pexa was big at the net again but this time it glances off him and that's gone wide and so another point to the Greens. Really is tight in this second set. First set they won it quite easily actually. At, uh, so ignore that, Dan. Take that off. 19-16. And that's good. And Pexa, Dunoski. 20-16 ahead. Yeah, four, really four set points here to level this up one all. There's one of them saved. But they've got the difficult end to defend against. You think the writing's got to be on the wall here. That was a lovely shot from Butcher. Yeah, great shot down the line from Butcher. Janos, uh, sorry, it's Dominic Peck. So just didn't quite close off that line block. Butcher saw the gap. Oh, that's good enough. 21-17. It's one set apiece. And we're going to go into a tie break. And there it is. What a, what a game we've got on here again. Just shows we said there was nothing between these two teams, both the same sort of height, both fairly athletic, but all four have great ball control. As we said in this wind, it's so important. Yeah. Oh, nice shot. Great swing from Janowski, opens up the shoulders again. You'll just see here, great set. And you just see his shoulders open up and his feet point towards that line, gets his wrist over the top of the ball. Janowski and Pex are both very happy to be going for the big hits when needed. Whereas uh, with Garcia Kid, he tends to be wanting to set to butcher if at all possible. But there's <laughs> Garcia Kid very happy to hit one there. Oh. You see on the block, it's important to be high, but keep your weight forward. You just see here that that's there really for Garcia to block. But you can see that he's ended up going backwards and landing on the floor if he keeps his weight and his hands over the net there. 
that's a point game for his side, but again, great shot from Team of Purple. Oh, and Butcher puts in the pile driver. Again, the difference between winning and losing these games are a team's ability to side out. And for me, siding out at the first attempt when the ball served over, to be able to return the ball with a winner, yeah, really important. Oh, and that one hitting the net, <laughs> taking all the pace off it. Garcia could Butcher look at each other. Yeah, Butcher comes back and oh, that could have that was a bit unfortunate there for the Greens, but 3-1. I think, I think we said three or four times that as soon as that block's pulled to shoot that middle ball, it's really hard to play against. And Pexa is big at the net yet again. We've seen this before. Yeah. Garcia Kid comes in for the hit. Oh, that's a big block. See, he's, he has got a big block. Garcia's just saying pretty much that you set me too tight there, Butch. Yeah. Keep me back a little bit. So it's a great block. Purple's leading 4-1. And you, I'm sure you don't be sick of hearing us say this, but there is definitely an advantage from the left side. So the Purples may lead 4-1 after the first five points. But now the next five points... They're going to be the green serving from the left, and they're going to be picking up the points. We've seen it before, but that's a three points away, and Butcher will not be happy with giving that one away. You see this on the replay. It's important time. You, you, you speak a lot about being able to serve a good serve that puts the opposing team under pressure, but it doesn't go out, and that's the difference between picking up cheap points off the serve and serving errors is just making sure that the opposition are under pressure, but you don't overcook it and make an error. Net given from Divnoski. And he's not too particularly happy. Can we see this on the replay? What happened here? Mm, well, his lower arm touched the net. He's trying to say that it didn't, but there was definitely movement in the net there, wasn't there? I don't there? think he's got a lot to complain about there, Mr. Pronofsky. Well, that's good defence from Garcia Kid. Oh, Kept this alive. What a hit cross court as well. Beautiful <laughs> angle that from MGK. This is beautiful. Because that ball's behind him. Yeah, he's in too early there, but he manages just to get his wrist still over the ball. Gets his thumb up to enable that angle on the spike. Oh, what a play that is as well. Dronowski answers that cross court smash with a beautiful line shot. Uses the block to his advantage. Well, it's five all, and they've changed ends again. So. We're in this situation where, at the moment, uh, the team on the left has won eight points to the team on the right winning two. So you can just see what a big advantage it is serving from the left-hand side. So now you'd expect the Purples to try and get a bit of a lead. And here they go again. They've got two more points, 7-5. It really is uh, quite a strange way. The, the way this wind is so strong, the team on the left really is getting a massive advantage. Now Drudnowski. Puts one in the net, so that's a three points away. In fact, the points that have been won by the teams on the right have been just serves into the net. Yeah, the, you know, the teams, you've got to make your serves count at the good end, especially in the last set of a semi-final, and that time, the ball drops short from Janowski. Let's see how he answers it here. He's at the net to block. Oh, beautifully done. And there's a hug from Garcia, kid to Butcher. Bit of brotherly love here coming in. Yeah, they love each other really. And yeah. it's a beautiful shot from Butcher. He saw that one. He has a little look. Well, it, it's a, that's a big two points now. Drinovsky putting one into the net. Good point for Butcher. Great defence from Garcia really Kid. Beautiful from Garcia Kid. And really, if they can sneak a point here. Oh, brilliant. This is absolutely amazing from both teams. And in the end, the Purples take it. Dronowski puts one in long. But what a rally that was. Great fight from both sides. And really, the green team are going to say that that's a good end for them. Even though they lost it 3-2, it keeps them right in the game at the good end. So they'll be happy with that, really. I know they're a point down, but it doesn't really matter. Because yeah. they've got five points here at the good end. And you can see already the team on the... Oh, what a little cross cut. Pexa. Bump cutty from Pexa. <laughs> this is unorthodox or what? Yeah, so they call it a bump cutty because it's an underarm bump or a dig and it's a cut shot. So, yeah, a bit of an unofficial name for it, the bump cutty, but it's beautiful from Pexa. 
Uh, I've, got, I've got to Google that later. That one's in, dips down. Hexa tried to leave it, but uh, you can see the dip on here. And uh, in, in quite a way in at the end. 9-8, so still no alarm bells in terms of the green team. They might be just one point behind, but still got a few more points from this left-hand end. Garcia Kid puts in the big serve. And Butcher, well, he, he took him a second attempt, but it was uh, the serve really won the point here. The serve was so big. He, he's going to be thankful for that, Butcher, because really he had the overpass and should have killed it the first time, but second time he makes no mistake. And that's a huge point. And oh, God, see a kid puts in a monster serve down the line. Again, lots of top spin making the ball dip and really hard to play against in this wind into your head. Well, yep. It's a head win for these boys and he's going to go again. Garcia Kid with this jump serve. This is the last point from the left, so Purples actually will be quite happy with this. I think they'll be, uh, oh, well, they'll be really happy now because it's going to be 10 all as they change ends. You can see the set from Butcher's two or three meters off. Really, his reference point in this set needs to be on the net because the ball's only going to blow back. Yeah. So he kept the reference point the same where he was aiming for. And the ball blew off the net. Led to the hitting error from Garcia Kid. Great attempts from the Purples, but it's a point to green. The crowd here really enjoying it. It was a good crowd on the promenade just behind us. They're all staying for the finals that are to come just after this semi-final the great thing with the greens winning that first point is it means that they're going to get another go at the strong end no matter what so that point means that the worst that can happen is they're 14 11 down and really the team in purple here are going to have to have a real big effort at this end to try and get to 14 11 or at least 13 12 to keep the initiative in that final end of the set so first to 15 12-11 to the Purples. Big points coming now. This is the business end of the match. And Butcher gets a touch off Pexa. And they're going to tie this up at 12 apiece now. Sided out well here, Butcher. And that's a big point for his side. At 12 all. Yeah, this is the last point before the changeover. Oh, and what a time for the Greens to take the lead as well. Brilliant block here from Butcher. Butcher doesn't do most of the blocking in this side, but he can block, not the tallest, but he's got good timing. And it showed there with a big block at a big time. And here's the changeover, and the Greens now suddenly favourites. Oh, the set went wrong, and Drinoski puts his hand on his head because he got a bit tangled up with the, with the um, rope as well. And I just wonder if that put him off on the set. He just gave it to Mark Garcia Kid, and now it's match point. Garcia Kid to serve, puts the big one in, and they've taken it. Brilliant performance. Beautiful work from Garcia Kid and Butcher. But really a top display from the team in purple as well of Don Pexer and Andre Janowski. That could have gone the either way. And really, again, it's the team that plays the best at the weekend that's gonna gonna take the game. And that was really Garcia and Butcher here. Great result for them. What a match. And uh, Mark Garcia, Kid and Carl Busher make their second final. So the junior boys final, Ben Torrens and Hayden Lawson up against Sam Dunbavin and Sam Walland. 21-9, Torrens and Lawson took the first set. And they're looking good here. Match point. Hayden to serve. And it's a bit of a strange situation. This when you've got Brett Ben Torrens from Bournemouth playing with Hayden Lawson from Croyd. And then Sam Dunbaven from Croyd playing with Sam Warren from Bournemouth. <laughs> so it's a bit of a bit of a mixture. But they've taken it, and the junior boys title has gone to the purples. And they've won it quite comfortably in the end. Great exhibition from both sides, they both both teams, very, very good players. And it won't be long until we see the others either. Great display of volleyball hit. So the women's final, it's Vicky Palmer and Alexandra Vajova up against Petra Joinova and Joe Healy. Joinova and Healy who took the first set 21-19. We're now going to join the action in the second set. Palmer and Vajova here. 
having lost that first set and uh, it's fair to say Louis the wind really has got even higher than it was earlier yeah you can see with the ball starting to do so much and it's really important that when it gets this breezy or I say breezy it's a bit stronger than the breeze that the players keep the ball a little bit lower to yeah. keep the ball under control especially at the so-called bad end which is on our right as we view well that one was just long and that serve hits the net there you go a little bit of luck you don't get many of those go for you so enjoy it while it happens and the purples have gone two nil up actually from the bad end of the pitch as well so but uh, the court excuse me so that's great serving really from palmer she dropped the last one a bit shorter that one went long There's a little bit of a mix up there in communication between Vidova and Palmer. Yeah, that, you know, usually, isn't it, for one of the players to cut like that? I think it was, uh, was it Palmer who was further behind and she should have called? Yeah, really, it, it just, it, it takes for one of them just to take responsibility and have a call. Possibly Palmer was in the better position there. Oh, yes. It's better that both players go for the ball than nobody. That's a great two, shot two. there, Joe Healy, celebrating that one. It's Australian junior player Healy, played in the GB indoor programme as well. Experienced player. Vicky Palmer, also a GB <laughs> international indoor player. Very vocal She's in her celebrations. Well, some players do play indoor and, um, and beach, but there's quite a few players who, you know, play indoor and actually won't even touch beach and will, you know, will keep well away from it. You know, what, what, what do you find the difference? Is it, you know, certain players? Um, you find really that indoors about more specialist positions. So they'll have some players really that, that don't dig the ball or don't volley the ball when they're in there just to hit or block. But on the beach, really, you have to have good all round skills. You have to be able to dig, set, spike and, uh, possibly block as well and indoor players tend to just get worked on certain areas of their game yeah. where beach you'll get repped and you'll get trained in every area and you'll have to be good at every aspect of the game Joe here they're getting well mixed up on that particular shot it's uh, and going long and too long just just over the back line fascinating to see that how you know some players who play indoor do convert to it but as you say they've got to be an all-rounder and you know when there's only two people on each team you really do have to be able to do it all there's nowhere to hide is there in beach volleyball no, there's definitely no hiding place that's <laughs> one of the things that everybody says is you come onto the beach and really you've got to be prepared to take that first ball yeah that dig there is no hiding place oh that one's into the net trying to attack too much there's, there's a bit of pressure on the greens here to try and get back into this but that's certainly uh, a free point to the purples and they'll take those all day Healy goes with the hit but there's not enough power on it and that's how you do it <laughs> that's unbelievable from David there's not a lot of pace in that approach she sort of idles in and all the powers from the shoulder yeah crushes it into the sand beautiful shot from her yeah that was a big hit serves strong again and it's already ca causing issues again the serve catching the wind causing the defensive team problems on the right hand side but um this time it was the purples who actually had real trouble there's the little waggly finger so that means serving to number one player yeah, they'll, they'll see actually the, the left hand means the player on the, to their left hand side as they look at them, as the player looks at them and the right hand means the player on their right hand side as they look. So they'll be very much indicating right. what area they're going to be blocking. A one means that the player's going to block the line and the two means that the player's going to try and block the cross court. Wow. <laughs> that's quite that's yeah. a little bit more complicated than what I thought so yeah it, it goes into a little bit more depth it goes into who you obviously want to be serving but also the line that you're going to try to block them yeah so the, the communication between block and defense really that signal Vicky Palmer serves too long and, uh, now it's the Greens who are four points down there's a strong serve from Healy here's Vajova goes long but Purples had read it, they knew that was coming. And a good block from Bajova at the net. Beautiful block, catches Vicky Palmer out, admiring a set a little bit there, Palmer, drifted on. And really, 
Should have been in there underneath the block covering. But she's had a good tournament so far, Vicky Palmer. Played very, very well, both of, both of these pairs to get where they have. Joe Healy serves long and he's right on the touch line here. Just don't see it on that camera too well. But it's, a, it's a great serve. You can't blame a player for leaving that one. Wow, that was special from the purple team there. A one-handed all the way. This would be an incredible point for them to win. Oh, that was not so good, though. The, jo um, the Jova there just... Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what she was trying to do, though. She was in two minds whether to hit it straight over the net or try and set, wasn't she? The wind does bring Dow into your mind for sure. Sometimes you wonder, because it's windy, do I set it? Do I give the ball back? You do get caught in two minds. This time it's a dig that wins the point. Very rare in beach volleyball. But again, in this wind, it's so hard to control. And for Davis, trying to get back to get that, trying to pull the block. It's just a little bit too deep for her. We're tied at 10's hit. And really in the final, all to play for. Very, very close game. Joey Cover there gets it over. As, uh, and there's a good hit from Palmer, and she's fired up for this one. Yeah, Isn't Palmer, it? she's been chosen to go and represent England in Canada. Exhibition event, very good player. That's a very good shot down the line from her. So it's a swap over. 21 points being played. They swap every seven. And Jerry Cover there puts that one straight into the net. Really having trouble with the wind at times here which is getting so blustery out there. Good crowd. There's a good crowd behind us on the promenade and the seats are all full opposite as well. They uh, really do love their volleyball here at see? Beach at, at Great Yarmouth. Do you see how that one got caught in the wind? <laughs> that was unbelievable. Palmer starts that ball looking towards the net, ends up closer to the baseline. Yeah. And, and then again, you can see that that ball just went so far back. It really is almost impossible to play in this, these conditions. But somehow they're managing, and you get a quality rally out of that. That's hustling at his highest level on the backcourt from the greens. Oh. Not pretty, but who cares in these conditions? It's good to get the ball up, even better to get the ball back. And yeah. to win the point in that situation is an absolute bonus for them really is quite incredible and Louis in these conditions like you know I, I know that you know beach volleyball never gets play called off they play in any condition but there must be situations where it is you're just going to try and win any point anyhow and, and skill sort of becomes a little bit takes a back seat and it's just trying to hustle in any way you can yeah you hear quite a lot of coaches think about and they talk about the process of how to do stuff and yeah the process of how to pass and set and stuff like that but in these conditions the process sort of goes out the window and it gets about just getting the ball back as you can see both teams working really really hard here just to get the ball back keep the ball in play yeah and that long hit off the uh, heel of the hand went too long so 15 13 to joey cover and healy and the girls in green oh <laughs> unorthodox from healy She's Another half surprised cutting. herself. Another bump cut. Yeah. Look at that on the, on the turn as well. Yeah. I don't think there's an actual name for that one. Yeah. Don't see that shot very often. The Jova's but. throwing the sand around in disgust at that one. And the serve is strong. And all the greens are serving from this left-hand side at a very crucial point in the match as well. And they're getting a few easier points. Just developing this lead. 17-13. This is going to be the last point from this, last serve from this side. Uh, no, excuse me, they've got a few more, haven't they? So that's, there's only been 30 points so far, so a real good chance of the Greens here. But that one, another unorthodox shot from Palmer. It really is hustle beach volleyball at the moment. Both teams pulling the block to good effect there. And Palmer actually just says, actually, have it back. <laughs> Bit more like hot potato than beach volleyball, but hey, it yeah. does the job as we said and you see that one point brings the serve back to the team in purple and it's an ace and it brings two points on the trot and they're right back in this game at 16-17. That's the second time in this set that Palmer's hit the net and it's just trickled over so she's had a little bit of luck her way. Greens put one into the corner and 
you know, it's a solid tactic here. If you get this opportunity, just play long. You know the wind's going to catch it. And the court is probably as half as long again as it would be normally. So Joe Healy serves. They have three points away from winning this title here at Great Yarmouth. And uh, there was a bad set there and Palmer puts it into the net. Change over. Two points away. Some crucial points here now for the team in purple. Both teams pulling the block again, just showing how hard it is to control the ball in this wind. Yeah. Do the players actually, you know, do, do they literally try and not put it up so high as well in these sort of situations? Especially from the so-called bad end on the right-hand side, I, I would say that you have to keep the ball low. You see, as soon as it gets high, it just makes life a nightmare. Yeah. As yeah. you can see there, Petra's underneath the ball, but the ball's going to be doing so much and she's trying to keep her eye on it, but she's also trying to move her legs and ends oh, yeah. up getting herself in the pickle. It's important to keep your arms relaxed and keep the ball low, especially at the bad end. Yeah, keeping it low. And there's a strong serve. And Palmer and Vajova have pulled this level at 19 apiece. Real problems for the teams on the right-hand side, time and time again. And they're going to be looking at the scoreboard. There's still three more points to come from this left hand side in fact four and the serve has gone long wide well what a crucial serve that was and uh, Palmer Vajova they're suddenly match point down they're going to be regretting that one big chance is it in it's it <laughs> what a serve on match point from Petra Yurikova both of these athletes first title on the VBT and what a way to take it that's a great serve clip in the back line well the purple team very disappointed look at that 21-19 21-19 a controversial way to finish the match what well, a victory for Joey Nova and Healy it's super exciting do you know what we haven't been together that long we, we're having fun um, to be honest like, I think that's the key yeah. to why, why we played this is our weekend. first proper tournament and we won it the conditions today have been crazy. The wind is, is super hard, specifically like with contrast to yesterday where it was really sort of quite dark but not so much wind. Today it was it was a battle of the serve, I think. Yeah. You know, hey, serving hard from the, the end that's sort of to your advantage, but just being patient down the other end. And then, you know, if you lose a point, you lose a point, but the other team are under the exact same sort of circumstances. So you just have to do what you can. Oh, amazing. Everything's, everything's so well organized, like, yeah, we happy. <laughs> the, 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 the support's been great here. I mean, to be fair, having the, the grandstand there and inviting people down, you can see that the locals are all stopping and hopefully, you know, it's introducing them to volleyball and, and I hope may, they may even get involved in the future. So we're on to the men's final. It's Jake Sheaf and Robin Mitsubrotsky yeah, against on. Mark Garcia Kidd and Carl Butcher. 16 all in the first set. Mark Garcia Kidd and Carl Butcher and with me is Louis Lett. Louis, you uh, you have a sort of little vested interest in this match. I guess you want one team to win more than the other. Yeah, it'd be <laughs> nice to see Garcia Kid and Butcher win. I'm also good friends with the boys in the other side as well. It's a pretty tight community, this beach volleyball yeah. community. Really, really good friends. And uh, they really have played well in this, this final, Garcia Kid and Butcher. Very much the underdog hit. The other team, you'd suggest, are internationals. Lots of international experience. And they're hanging in here. Garcia Kid and Butcher. Well, the sun's really come out for us in this uh, men's final. We've just had the women's final, but the, the wind is still pretty strong out there. But, you know, the, the men have got a little bit more power. So, am I right in saying that the men are able to control the ball a little bit more, even in the strong wind? Yeah, possibly in the spiking area, but there's, there's not so much difference in the pass and set. It's still important to keep those main important rules of keeping the ball lower at the bad end, and you can push it a little bit more at yeah. the good NC there, that's quite high from from Butcher, but it's well tracked actually from Garcia Kid, but he ends up on the sand because he just gets in too early that time. Great block there from Mitsubotsky. And Jake Sheaf will serve from the right hand side. So okay. you'd say the Greens are still favourites here actually, to be honest. Well yeah, to be one point down to the good end is pretty pretty close here. Yep. Oh that's a great block from Robin Mitsubotsky again though. Garcia Kid just struggling to get over that big block again. Well timed. Metzabrotsky's timing will be as soon as he sees Garcia Kid start going up in the air, he'll go up at the same time. 
That was really good work I from him. I think Garcia could actually put that one into the net. It was hard to tell. Oh, he's done it again. Another block. That's three in a row. And at a crucial time of the match, when you've got the Greens as favourites, Mitsuki Brodsky puts in a monster block at the net. Again, great timing and really just experience, I think, showing here. And Butcher nets that one. The first set is over. And really, that is a Mitsuki Brodsky show here. He's, uh, his presence at the net just put the pressure on Butcher. Yeah, I, you're completely right. And I think the guys in green will be disappointed because they played ever so well to get to, what was it, 17 all? Yeah. 18-17, um, and then they've gone and lost three points very, very quickly. And given the first set to Sheaf and Yeah, well, that could have be that could be a crucial turning point. <laughs> so tight it was, but... Certainly from a good end, they lost four points in a row, and those are the sort of points that I think uh, Garcia, Kidd and Butcher will say to themselves that, you know, they, they maybe should have been looking to do the little pokies over the top rather than be going for the big hits. Yeah, that was a lovely shot from Butcher. We have just seen that three or four smashes have got blocked, but again, they have to try, and it's a new set, so they have to try and remain positive. Go for their shots, but also you're completely right, the placement's going to be key in this second set because Jake Sheaf is so quick on defence. He is a great defender. So they're going to have to be pretty clever here, the guys in green. Robin Mitsubotsky has got a lot of experience, of course, on the World Tour. And uh, with Tom Lord, who's played on the uh, on the World Tour for quite a few years. Very experienced, had a real good crack at trying to qualify for the Olympics. Mitsubotsky and Lord, they just missed out to Steve Grotowski and John Garcia, unfortunately. But it's great to see them back on our tour they certainly add so much when Mietza Brodsky or Lord or Sheep are in town he's like a brick wall isn't he you just can't get through him at the moment I'm just sure he's only got two arms up there when he goes up but that's another point that's gone to purple exhibition exhibition in blocking really from Mietza Brodsky good timing yeah good position you see that his blocks are going towards the middle of the court safely hitting the floor every time and it's just, I think, it's just really putting negative thoughts into the head of Garcia and Butcher. But that's a great reply anyway. Yeah. Shot over the top, just dipping. They knew he was putting it there, but the shot was too good. There's Jake Sheaf with the cross court, and he executes that beautifully. Real high quality beach volleyball here from both teams. There's not many errors, is there? It's just good points after good point. No, one thing for sure in these conditions, it's important not to make errors. You know, you can't quite be as clinical at times in these conditions, but you can actually give yourself a chance by not making the error because of the windy conditions. There should be more errors. So if you keep your error count down, there's a chance that the other team will make a mistake for you. Yeah. They fought away here. Jake Sheaf tried to keep that one alive. Swap over after seven points, of course, and that one is long. Catching the wind, which uh, is as strong as it's ever been today. Certainly caused a bit of chaos. It's nice to see some people topping up their tans in the distance. There's a good crowd here watching this. It's really been uh, a good day of beach volleyball. And of course, a lot of these players have played hard day on the Saturday on the on the sort of what's called the round robin qualification day and then they have two tough matches on the Sunday yeah you'll find that they could possibly actually have three um, if you both of these teams qualify through the winners brackets so they have actually only had two today um, but if you lose your first game on the Saturday it's a long way to get to the Sunday yeah some teams have to play six games to just make the Sunday and possibly play another three <laughs> on that Sunday so yeah, it's a tough game. It takes its toll on people. Beach volleyball. Yep. And nope. it is a it is a double elimination. I should explain. So if you do lose a match, you you don't go out. You get another chance to go in through what we're calling a losers bracket. And yeah, um, it's just a long way around, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, but you can still win the tournament having lost one of the earlier matches. So you find the more games you play, the heavier your legs get, yep. and that's a little bit unfortunate in a game where you have to jump so much. You'll find that these boys now, as much as it's a final, they'll start to feel the whole weekend's play build up yep. in their legs and their muscles. It's a very exhausting well, sport, for Maybe sure. not in sheath as he gets high and blasts the ball <laughs> down the line. Well, they seem to be very fresh, and uh, at the moment, it really is starting to turn towards the purples. You see Garcia Kid 
wasn't really jumping too high for that block, was he? There looks to be a little bit of tiredness on the greens. Yeah, you'll find that, you know, Jake Sheaf trains full time with his usual partner, Chris Gregory, out of Crystal Palace. Um, Robin is used to training full time, not training quite as much at the moment, but he's very fit. He's always in the gym. Yeah. Always keeping himself in good condition. The boys in green training oh. currently two, two times a week out of the Leaf Athlete Academy where um, Carl Butch is an employee and Garcia's actually just gone back to do some more studying. So they don't quite get the opportunity to train quite as much as their counterparts, but it's very, very close. Well, it was a great rally just there with the greens really on the floor and managing to keep into it and then winning the point, but straight away response from the Purples team here as Mr. Gubrotsky comes in and there's the big hit. Bit of the net as well, just for good measure. As it make, makes it impossible to defend. Great shot. He he saw Garcia go line there and he just left that cross court shot open. Serve is too strong for Garcia Kid. And 10 4. They'll swap ends. Points add up to uh, a total divisible by seven. They swap over every, every seven points. And uh, well, if there's some consolation here, the Greens are going to have a slightly easier side now on the left hand side. Going to need a big push here, the team in green, to get back in this final. Hustled really hard in the first set, took it very, very close. But you can't afford to give these two in purple too much respect because otherwise, you know, that three or four point gap that we saw in that first set was 21-17. It might turn into an eight or nine point difference. Yeah. So they need to remain positive. Need to stay on their case and really bring something to this game now. That one's long from Sheaf. Um, it must have taken a touch off the block. No, off the defence, sorry. Oh, so just hitting fingers. Yeah, the line judge yeah. calls there that there's a touch off Garcia Kid in defence. And Garcia Kid called it himself as well, so fair play to him. As, uh, I won't ask you to mention names, there's a few players who wouldn't say that. <laughs> don't, yeah, say, don't say a thing. <laughs> possibly a few coaches he wouldn't. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, no, very honourable Mr. Garcia Kid for uh, admitting to, to that. It's, it's, it's good to be honest in beach volleyball. And really, as much as a point's important, it does tend to swing in roundabouts. Yeah. So you, you might own up to the odd point, but the odd point might go back in your favour. So really, it's good just to own up, and that's really good for him. I, I remember a commentary I did a few years ago with one of the beach volleyball players, and he did say, Said at the end of the day, if you if you if you do a little cheat on somebody, the word gets around, and you get it back on you every time. So you know it's actually bad. You might as well just play the game properly. Yeah, I totally agree. And uh, everybody everybody knows on the court what's going on. This is nice play here. Oh, and Garcia kid just touching the top of the net, and now it's moving. The purple team have just got that big lead now. They've got eight points lead. And you've got to think that this is going to be significant. You know, that, that's better from Garcia, Kid and Butcher. They pass the ball to a better, better area. It's not too tight. Butcher's shoulders are much better in the set. He's facing the aerial on the outside. And it gives Garcia, Kid, the chance to convert. Unfortunately, the follow-up serves just wide from Mark Garcia, Kid. It brings Jake Sheaf back to serve. Yeah, that's a free point. We'll get to see that again. Yep. Not a good serve at all. And Sheaf and Mitsubotsky, without doing uh, anything spectacular, just playing very solid beach volleyball. There's just a few errors creeping in to the game here for the Greens. Sheaf puts in a big serve, but it's wide. See this one again. How far wide was that? <laughs> Garcia Kid was going for it and then he pulled out the last second. It but was wide enough for Garcia Kid not to be too sure. <laughs> Very close. That was. Oh, good hit and great defence from Sheaf. They're keeping this one alive. And Sheaf then, a win just taking the ball behind him in the end, making a bit of a mess of that particular hit. You see this here. Yeah, look how far that ball's behind him as he's trying to hit it. Ideally, the ball should be in front of you when you're hitting yeah, it. Yeah, when you're spiking, <laughs> it's got a bit in this wind, you know. That's better from Sheaf. That's, that's like a beautiful it. spike there. Yeah. He just delays his approach, delays his approach a little bit, sees the set, falls at the highest point when he spikes the ball. It's a beautiful swing from him. And bang. Dominating this set now, Adrian. 
Yep. Eight points to the good hit. This is comfortable. Sun goes behind a cloud. And a little bit of a confusion. I think Mr. Dubrovsky knew that that was going in anyway. So he might as well have a pop at it. 9.16 though. And I think guys in green actually, yeah, Garcia Kid's not really making a big effort on the serve. In fact, the serve is pretty poor as well. Yeah, we, we really promote to take your time. You, a lot of players, or it should be promoted that there's like a little bit of a pre-serve routine, that they take a couple of seconds to have a breath, line yourself up and focus on what's just about to happen. Yeah. And unfortunately, when you find yourself a few points behind, it tends to go out the window if there's a long way back. Yeah. Again, beautiful pressure shot from Shifa Mietzabrotsky. They're going to have a free go at it here. Oh, nice and simple. And uh, I think the Greens have uh, have accepted their fate in this particular match, really. But really, it's, it's to the class of Mietzabrotsky and Shifa. The control they've shown in these conditions yeah. is really up against them. The conditions, all the players today, and they've got experience and they've played so, so well. 18-10. There's the big hit from Garcia Kid. Well defended from Mitsubotsky. Again, there's just, even though they're controlling the game, there's a never say die attitude in defense from this team in purple. Oh, <laughs> and in the end, the wind completely blows the ball away from Minsky Brodsky. This is just incredible. Look at that. That was nothing wrong with a second. And suddenly, look at where that ball's gone. The ball just keeps traveling away from him, and he thinks he's got it right. He thinks the approach is good, and then at the last minute, it ducks away. Oh, that's incredible. The serve goes long, which you don't see very often from that left-hand side. And now, 19-11, two points away. They are from this title. Nicely played from Butcher there. But even then, oh, that's just a big hit from Sheaf. And again, that was a point really that normally you'd have said that Butcher and Garcia Kidd would have taken, but they defended it and, and just pulled in a superb point. It's a great shot from Sheaf, that high margin of error down that, on that angle down the line. Last shot, match point now. Another big hit. Well, oh, well, there's another big hit from the Greens, and the Purples again have turned it into point, and it's those points that have won them this championship here at Great Yarmouth. Louis, they've been just absolute class. Different class, she from Yetzabrotsky, international experience, full-time training, makes such a difference, and wow, they've really torn the competition apart this weekend, and I'm sure with their respective partners, They'll go a long way this season. So Schieff and Mitsubrotsky take the title 21-17, 21-11. It's Jake Schieff's second title in a row with a different partner. Let's hear what they've got to say. Yeah, the uh, the win picked up a lot since our semi-final. Um, good few miles per hour as well. So it was uh, it was tough to control the ball. The ball's quite light, so um, it does fly around in the wind a lot. So it was, it was tough. Yeah, I think I think generally the level's gone up. There's, um, there's a lot of training going on down in Bournemouth at the moment at the Leaf Academy. And just generally the skills of all the players has gone up. So I've, generally across the board, the level the level's gone up. We just yeah. need to get that top end, keep pushing that up to the world standard. It's great to see teams, you know, training a lot more and uh, coming out and being a lot more stable in, in these conditions. And um, to see the juniors as well, absolutely awesome to get some get some high level juniors. Yeah, so I've played uh, I played four four tournaments uh, with four different partners and won them all. So I'm, I'm four from four so far. Um, and it shows that I'm quite versatile. <laughs> I was going to say, is that more to you do with you or the different partners you're getting? You're picking the right people. He's had, he's had great partners throughout the year. Great partners. <laughs> I came here probably four or five years ago and uh, the event is much, much better now. Um, they put on a good good event here, the crowd get into it, so we're always happy to come back. I'll be I'll be back with my normal partner, yeah, the six foot ten giant Chris Gregory. <laughs> and you've got Robin, Kirk Pittman, is that right? Robin will be yeah, playing. I'm with Kirk Pittman, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a real high level tournament. There's some really good teams coming, so we're all looking forward to that. So the champions race after three events, Cole Butcher and Mark Garcia Kid with 552 points each, they lead from the rest of the field. But Jake Sheep with two victories under his belt is catching strongly. On the women's side, Laura Plonke, having just dipped out of the semi-final stage, still leads by a good distance over the rest of the field. She's favourite to take the champions race with one more event to go. 
So we had a fantastic time at Great Yarmouth and some great beach volleyball on offer. The next event is at Weymouth and we'll bring you all the action from that event soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.